Hey there guys, this is the Boltem and Elias and welcome to my YouTube channel. Praise the Lord everybody. Um, you guys will be hearing Pastor Tony Suarez in a couple of seconds. But I just invite you guys to open your heart, open your ears and listen to what the mighty man of God has to say. Um, we spoke a little bit on COVID-19 situation, but he also preached to the church. So I just invite you guys to really, really pay attention and dissect what he's saying. Um, and I just hope that this is a blessing to your life because I know it was a blessing to mine. Enjoy. Really, really excited. Guys, Amen. if any, if some of you guys don't know who Pastor Tony Suarez is, he's a mighty man of God, one of my favorite preachers. Um, you know, he is an advisor for many government officials. You know, you are also the vice president of the... Um, what is it? It's uh, um, NHCLC, correct? Um, Absolutely. Yes. You know, host of TBN uh, Salsa, the, the host of Praise TBN, host of Faith Alive TBN Salsa, and a national evangelist. So, um, guys, he's actually in Virginia Beach, correct? Well, I moved to Tennessee a year and a half ago, so I'm wow. in Tennessee tonight. Wow. So what time is it over there right now? It is 11.02 p.m., and oh. for what it's worth, I've turned into an old man because normally I'm asleep by right now. <laughs> oh, snap. Well, you know what? Praise God that we have you on this on this live, guys. So, yes, guys, Absolutely. He, he is taking um, away from his sleeping time, right? He has a family. He has kids. You know, he has a wife. And uh, I'm just very, very grateful to have you here with me, Pastor. So let's just get right to it, right? Well, I love you all. And you know what? I just saw here, Brother Bowtie, I just saw that we have um, Luke Reed. Luke Reed is a pastor uh, mega church pastor. He has churches in Europe, pastors wow. in Australia, pastors wow. in Orange County. He's like everywhere. And he's on your Instagram feed wow. tonight. My that's God. Amazing. God bless you. God that's bless powerful. You. <laughs> that's amazing. Luke, Reed, that's him right there. Come on. He's like, come on. I mean, I'm come on. A little bit too. <laughs> I, heard, I just heard him say, and then, and he used to be like a rugby, rugby player. Like if you saw him, he's built, he's huge. Oh, I mean, man. everybody's tall to me, but he's extra tall to me. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen those memes where it's like, you know, he's going to play basketball at 5 o'clock, but he has to preach at 7 o'clock? He's going to play rugby like, at 5 o'clock, but he has to preach at, five, at 9 o'clock? <laughs> like, I, like, I was hanging out in Australia with Luke, and I asked him, I said, Pastor Luke, do you play basketball? And he looked down at me, he goes, do you play miniature golf, mate? I'm like, yeah, all right, I hear you. I see you. Oh, man. Oh, man. Do you play tennis? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good. Good. So, man, thank you for inviting me on, and... um for let me be a part of this. Um, it's exciting. You know, these are, they're interesting times that we're living in, That's right. but interesting times um, and, and, and not making light of anybody's consternation, anyone's sickness, pain, grief, anxiety, because we all have all of that. But it, it's in these times that God works his biggest and greatest miracles. Amen. This Amen. is when the, you know, um, the, the, the Roaring Twenties, the 1920s were known as the Roaring Twenties. And that happened right after what's, con what's called the Spanish flu, the epidemic of 1918. Influenza hits the country. Um, and it, it's in the news right now because a lot of people are comparing what we're dealing with with coronavirus to what we lived through in 1918. But we came out of 1918, That's went right. into this time called the Roaring Twenties. It was an exciting time for the country. And I'm just believing I'm just believing that in Jesus' name, we're going to have our own roaring 20s. Amen. I have a mentor Christ. in my life. I have a mentor named Morton Bustard. Yes. I, um, I talk to Brother Bustard probably almost every day, especially right now that we're all quarantined. Yes. Brother Bustard told me at the beginning of the year, he said 2020 is going to be a year like anything. It's not going to be like anything we've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He was right. We've n I've never seen a year like this. I'm 40 years old. I've never lived through anything like this. Mm -hmm. I remember 9-11. I remember, I remember the Gulf War of the 90s. I remember 9-11. I, uh, I remember as yeah, – I'll tell you, this, sounds, this might sound funny to some, but I remember as a little kid in the early 80s, early 80s wanting to watch Sesame Street and Mr. <laughs> Rogers and I couldn't because wow. PBS would break into the into the the hearings for the Iran Contra affair wow. in the early 80s 
And there was concern then, but I've never lived through anything like what we're living through right now. It really is a year unlike anything we've ever seen before. But that's, and, and this isn't cheap, uh, cheesy preacher talk and cliches, but it really opens us up for to experience the goodness and the miracle working power of God like we've never seen before. That's right. So that's that's where we're at. Anyhow, this is your program. This is this is your feed. So you <laughs> no, talk and I'll, I'll be quiet and listen. No, to no, you. you're good. You're gonna be doing a lot of talking. By the way, I really would like Major League Baseball to start so that I could <laughs> be like I'm here just wearing my shirt by faith, por la fe. You know that my White Sox are gonna finally go back to the playoffs here pretty Ooh. soon. Might not be this year, but I'm just speaking it into existence. Amen. But that's um, right. That's right. I, w I wish I wish baseball would start again. Anyways, it's your feed. You talk no, and I'll answer. No, I mean I'm I'm I was excited for the new Padres season to start too. I don't like I don't watch too much baseball, but I like going to the games. And I'm here in San Diego, oh, yeah. so you know it's right here, beautiful field. For me, that would be the Los Angeles Lakers. This was our year to win our championship, but you know, hopefully, let's see if the season starts right. Well, I'll tell you what, 1993, uh, I was 13 years old, and the White Sox were extra good. It was you, uh, you, in some of these names you guys might not know, but yes. Frank Thomas, Tim Raines, Lance Johnson. I mean, we were good. We were awesome. And that's the year that, that uh, baseball went on strike. Oh, I'm sorry, man. 94. 94. Forgive me, 94. Baseball went on strike. And that was going to be like our year. We were going to win the whole thing. And they went on strike and there was no World Series. And oh, so man. I think Laker fans can, uh, can understand right now because I, I thought – I thought you guys had. I think you have yeah. it or had it. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's well. Right. I see somebody here, Jenny Razzo, saying we hope to have you in National City again soon. Me That's too. Right. I hope I can come back to National City. Yes. Yes. I love it there. Yes, the great church bishop is an amazing man of God. He's he's great. Yeah, Jenny's a really good friend of mine. She was there actually at the at the big old event that they had not too long ago. So um, sleeping Fabian, uh, brother, I keep taking over your thing. Is baseball no, season canceled? No, it's not. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we believe. You know what they said yesterday? Huh. They said that the World Series, the final game of baseball, actually might be played closer to Christmas. So wow. they're like talking. Normally, baseball is done like in October. They're going to extend the season, and they're going to have to play some games in stadiums without fans, or they might have to move some of the cold weather games to some of like the warmer stadiums to play. Yes. But they're saying like we might have a World Series closer to Christmas. That's <laughs> that's pretty crazy, man. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's nice. anyhow, this is you, this is your show. I'm hijacking it. Right you're now. good. You're good. You're good. Don't what do you want? What do you want to talk about? What cheese do you want tonight? So you know, I imagine. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so you know, obviously a, a while back I actually went live, and uh, you know we were talking, and then I'll, I'm also uh, was with sleeping Fabian. He has a podcast, and uh, another brother from uh, the yeah. Day, well, we we were speaking on this topic. And I know that there's a lot of uncertainty. And Ishmael said, hopefully no protesters next service. Uh, oh, hey, God. you know what? They ought to come and we'll just pray them, pray them and tell them we love them. Praise the Lord. Tell, tell the protesters if they would come have a talk with somebody, they wouldn't have to protest. That's right. Do you know that you can't convert somebody you're unwilling to converse with? Mm -hmm. That's right. That's it. You That's just got to right. talk to people. You know, we got to stop being so hateful on each other. We love each other. Yes. I've always stood up for immigrants and for undocumented immigrants and yes. for immigration reform. Yes. And what, what would cause somebody to think that Tony Suarez <laughs> sold out? You know, they, they, I, I heard because I didn't see him. We were already gone. It's yes. a sad protest. They protested after we'd already left. Yes. But uh, anyways, we love him anyhow. But um, I, I heard that somebody, you know, that one of them said something about, like, Trump bought me or Trump will compro, <laughs> something like that. I wish Trump would buy me something. <laughs> I wish he'd give me a bottle. If he bought me a bottle of water, I'd hang it up. I mean, goodness gracious, <laughs> I wish he bought me something. He hasn't bought me anything. I don't get paid for any of that. We don't get paid for any. We, we do that on behalf of the people. But That's you right. can't bring change That's right. to uh, a place that you're unwilling to converse Yes. So I went, I've gone to a table of dialogue. I didn't see him protesting when I was there, when President Obama was in the White House. That's right. We're, we're, I don't know where those protesters were then. That's right. I mean, guys, it's not a matter of who's in the White House. It's a matter of the office, the That's Oval right. Office. You respect the office. And yes. if God gives you a voice, 
speak your voice. I mean, that's what we're there. We're agents of change. We're agents of reconciliation, but we can't do that. Anyways, this is your show, man. It's no, not no, you're good. You're good. You're good. I, I'm enjoying this talk. I'm enjoying this talk. And you know what? I was there on the front line supporting you, okay? I was there, you know, talking to you because, you know. It, oh, well, it kind of, careful. They'll be protesting you. Yeah, no, it's just fine. It's all good. It's all good. I understand, you know, you know, you're part of the, you know, the NHCLC, and I know you, that's what you're fighting for. I you spoke to you that night, and, you know, you are a, um, you know, fighting for immigration reform. So that's amazing. Um, why in the world, right? But, you know, let's just pray for those people, and God can bless them, illuminate them, right? But, um, you know, just know that you have a, a, a army right here to support you, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, yes. All right, so what, what, what questions do you have for me tonight before before yeah. I have to go to bed. No, you're good. You're good. So, you know, the clarity. So I know that a lot of people were thinking like, oh, like, is it a national lockdown? And I know you actually posted something about that, that um, I think you, I think it was about, you know, whether the, the federal government, they, they have less um, strong, stronger laws. I think you, you, you might've said, can you like, yeah. elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. Well, so um, I think, I, I think the, um, the rumors of a national lockdown, have subsided uh, they've gone see uh, two weeks ago uh there was there was like these rumors these text messages and uh, postings going around saying that uh president trump was going to enact something called the stafford act and which essentially would be like martial law and what that means is they were saying we're going to have soldiers walking up and down the streets of our city and basically you go out and there's going to be a soldier out there you know ch -ch -ch, get back in the house i mean that kind of stuff and, yes. and and that's just it's just not the case. It's not going to happen. And it didn't matter how many times I posted that uh, two weeks ago. I'd post it, and then someone would call and say, "Yeah, but I got a text, and my my ex girlfriend's aunt's mama's cousin's brother in law's father in law <laughs> has an inside connection." And I'm like, "Yeah, no, he doesn't. Uh, God oh, bless him. God, God bless him." But no, I mean, it's not going to happen. Un gusto escucharlos, Pastor Tony. Estaría dispuesto a traer una enseñanza. Claro que sí, claro que sí. Escríbame y déjame saber cuándo y dónde y cómo y lo haremos con mucho, mucho gusto. Sorry about that. Nice. No, so you're good. You're good. You're we're, there is no national lockdown, but states have implemented stricter guidelines or stricter measures, if you will. President Trump and the, and the administration have issued guidelines. It's not a law. It's guidelines. They're saying this is what we should do. Because here's the cool thing. They trust us to be responsible citizens. And guys, we need to take the guidelines serious. Um, I travel for a living. I, f I live on airplanes. I fly about 300,000 miles a year. Wow. I haven't been on an airplane in two weeks. Um, I'm going stir crazy. I think my wife wants to divorce me. My kids don't <laughs> like me. Tired of homeschool. I've, I already finished Netflix. Like, there's nothing else to watch. <laughs> I can only watch. I mean, like, I've watched The Office 100 times. Yes, I mean, there's just. That's right. I mean, like, I've run out of stuff to do. Like, I, I, I'm like, you know, I don't, but I don't, I, I want to help slow this curve. This is unlike anything we've ever lived through before. And I want to slow the curve. Uh, I have family members um, uh, that, that are suffering with coronavirus right now, not in my home, but people in my family that have, that have been diagnosed. I have one cousin that has already beat it and come back. I have another family member that's de currently dealing with it. Um, there's an evangelist that I know that's in dire need of a miracle right now. A pastor friend of mine, his wife was in a coma for almost two weeks in Oregon, and God just miraculously healed her and raised her up. So it's Pretty serious. Cool. We need to take it serious and, and you know practice the federal guidelines. And again, some of your states, what was the path you took for healing? Feel um oh man uh what was the path you took oh, for wow. healing feel like that gift path people abandoned it was something that identified us but now it seems to be a rarity amongst us man brother i don't want i'm just going to call you brother Sada Chach. Gosa, yes Chach. Chach. Brother Chach. okay that we could spend you know what i need to do a live just about that subject yeah i agreed. need to do it um you know uh, so uh, all right brother chach if i don't answer that in the next five minutes remind me because i want to i want to come back i want to come back to that okay yes. Yes. um let me just finish the corona or the, about this deal so yes. every state is a little different california i, I assume you guys you guys are pretty much on like a, a lockdown two of two weeks you're on some some sort of a lockdown um 
uh, Virginia, Maryland, Washington, D.C., they're saying that it's till June. I don't know. I, th that could be a little exaggerated by the governor of Virginia, right. but I don't know. We'll see. Maybe, you know, a, the, the federal guideline says April 30th. I'm hoping things are much better by then. Um, we can't we can't continue to be shut down forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we, we got to figure it out. But, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what happens. Saludos desde Uruguay. Dios les bendiga. Wow. En el hermoso país de Uruguay, Dios les bendiga, Dios les bendiga. Chach was the one you declared healing on and experience. Praise God. Praise wow. God. Wow. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear it. Um, so that's where we're at. So everyone practice the guidelines. I appreciate you, uh, Rubster220. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> and they're saying it's going to be about two months. Yeah, uh, that's Hector... Oh, seven. Yeah, it's it. You know, you hear so many different reports. You know, President Trump talked about opening the country back up around Easter. That was hopeful. And, yes. and he said that he said it was my aspiration. And that would have been awesome. Now he's That's talking me. about April 30th. Some people are saying by June. This is my opinion. I don't I'm not speaking on behalf of the White House, the administration, the government or anybody else. This is just yes. my opinion. My opinion is that they'll start opening the country little by little. So you'll start seeing in April 30th, they'll say, okay, this portion, we can kind of ease up here. But the big cities like New York, where there's the biggest outbreaks, those will probably last a little longer. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's just what it is, you know, so um, again, I want to be safe, I want my kids to be safe. Um, and, and again, it's unprecedented, we haven't really lived through anything like this since 1918. Um, with the Spanish flu, as they called it back then. And um, everyone needs to take care of each other, wash your hands, mm -hmm. practice social distancing. And uh, if we can go back to church for Easter, I'm so ready. Um, oh, Mr. Yeah. Hernandez, I'm ready. Let me tell you what. I am so ready for church. Amen. I'm ready. I mean, like, I'm going to go, like, old school, like, Maybe no, run the aisles. I'm gonna bring my little. I'm gonna bring my little handkerchief to church. That day. I might wear suspenders like I used to in the '90s. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do the Pentecostal helicopter. Yes. I'm gonna run the aisle. I mean, I'm. I can't wait to go back to church. Yep. I miss it so much. But yep. you know, we are. So somebody had asked me. Let me answer that, bro. Let, let me shut up. This is your no, no, thing. You go ahead. You go ahead. You're, you're the floor is yours, Pastor. Go ahead. Oh. Nah, no, see, now, no, okay. So here, so somebody asked me, where's my Bible? Somebody asked me, forgive me here, I don't really have all the good camera angles. Somebody no, said, well, good. Pastor, you know, how do we reconcile Romans and Hebrews and we're not going to church and we want to practice social distancing and we don't know how all this thing works. So wow. Hebrews 10, uh, uh, I'm trying to be so good about not touching my face. Yes. You know, I do I do communion every morning at 7 a.m. East that's Coast right. time. That's 4 a.m. your guys' this time. Yeah. But somebody wrote me, they're like, Pastor, that's such a blessing. I just wish you stopped touching your face. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Pastor, for being a great example for the church. Thank you. What are your advice do you have for having church at home with our kids and family? Okay. I'm going to answer that with this scripture. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Hebrews 10 and 25. You know, that's like the famous scripture, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. So it's hard for us not to go to church. We've been raised that this is part of the faith. Yes. The verse right before it says, let us consider one another and provoke unto love and to good works. We got to think about our communities right now. We don't want to spread coronavirus. There's... Uh, well-meaning, well-intentioned people. There was a church in Chicago, had church, and like 42 people got sick. And I'm not, a, listen, I, I think you should have the right, you know, according to your convictions. Um, I don't like, I don't like turning on the television or the news and hearing that a pastor got arrested. I, it just, it rubs me the wrong way. You got to understand, my grandfather was, his, the water well in Colombia was poisoned just because he was uh, evangelical, just because he was a Pentecostal preacher. Wow. They stoned my father. Not when I mean stoned, I don't mean, I mean like they took rocks <laughs> and stoned my father and wow. left him for dead in Colombia. for pre So when I hear that pastors are getting arrested, it hurts my heart. And I yeah. know somebody says, well, pastor, they didn't get arrested for preaching. They got arrested for, you know, the soul. And I, I get all of that, but I'm saying I just, doesn't sit well with my heart but right. um 
But at the beginning of this, I kind of struggled just being transparent. I'm thinking, well, I, I want to be faithful to the word that said the word says that, you know, not forsaking. That means don't abandon the assembling of one another, uh, one another. But you know what? We've proven that you can do that verse in a plague because we didn't abandon it. In fact, I'd say we're closer than ever. Look at us right now on Instagram. This is yes. this is the body of Christ fellowshipping, mm -hmm. coming together. Um, I, I've had 82,000 people tune in to have communion with me over the last two weeks. Wow. I've awesome. never had 82,000 people tune in to do anything with me during two weeks. But yes. we've come together. And so thank God that there's the technology. Thank God for Uber Eats. Thank God for yes. takeaway and carry Amen. out and drive through and the internet and Netflix and Hulu and whatever else you have. <laughs> it's it's a totally different day. So to the person that asked, um, a pastor in Florida was charged with a crime for holding services despite his giver. What do you think? Do you think this hysteria may be used by some state? Um, you know what? I think um, I think the attorney that the pastor in Florida has is really, really good. Very, very good. He's the same attorney that defended Kim Davis a few years ago. So I, I feel confident that our constitutional rights to freedom of religion will be protected. But um, again, we here's the thing. Here's the thing. I believe we should be able to worship. I think we should be able to do our thing and whatever. But I need to be a good neighbor, too, because your neighbor who doesn't have the experience that you've had with God, they don't understand why you're so zealous. Mm -hmm. And so because they don't understand your faith, your, your experience, they, all they see is in their eyes, you're just being reckless. That's and right. so I have to be able to balance brother Buster taught me that we needed to be pragmatic, prof prophetic people. That means you got to be practical and spiritual. That's you, right. you, if you're so spiritual that you're of no earthly good, that, that doesn't help anything. Mm -hmm. So you got to be able to balance both. So we've, uh, to, somebody asked, how do you, you know, any advice for having church with your kids and everything while you're doing home service? Well, mm -hmm. um, I would download, here's one thing that I would do. I would download the Bible app, <laughs> okay? And there is, and I'm not meaning that sarcastically. I'm saying download yes. the Bible app. And there's all these free Bible studies, like wow. uh, devotionals that you can do on there. Uh, my wife and my kids and I, we're doing one by Torin Wells right now. Nice. It's free. And what's cool is that on that on the Bible app, you find the um, the study, the, the devotional you want to do. And then, like, you invite your friends and family. So, like, in our house, all seven of us are connected on there. So at the end of the devotional, there's a place to leave a note. And so for Gina and I, we told our kids, we don't care what time of the day you do your devotional but do it. And then you got to leave a note. And then Gene and I can read, what are they getting out of the word? What are they getting out of those scriptures? And it lets us know, number one, are they doing it? Number two, how's God speaking to them? So that's one good thing that you could do. Another thing is, um, and I'm very big about this, support your local church. Hey, and, and hear me, hear me and hear me very clearly. If your pastor has never had to be in front of a camera and do social media and do all of this, you don't understand the stress that man is going through or woman, depending what denomination you're part of. You don't know the stress that they're going through right now. Don't add to it by not tuning in or criticizing or, or talking junk about it. And, you know, I pastor the camera angle, just support them, love them, be like, pastor, man, thank you for doing that. If yes. you tune in on Sunday and it's like this, you know, and like, or, or you tune in and, and they're like this, they're like, I'm in hermano. ¿Cómo están? Dios les bendiga. <laughs> Just say amen, like support the pastor. Or if he's, you know, like this, he's like, I'm in it, you know. I mean, just weird angles and whatever. <laughs> just love on them. They're, everybody's trying their best. Everybody didn't know they're going to have to become a televangelist three That's weeks true. ago. That's true. You know, <laughs> but here we are. Here we are. By the way, this is my most prized collection. There's wow. 100 and, 178 <laughs> Starbucks mugs on that wall right there. Impressive. There's my... There's my grape juice that I have communion with every morning, but that's every every city or state that has one, um, a Starbucks mug. I, I buy them, and there yes. they are. Nice, so nice. That's uh, that was my uh, I don't know birthday or Christmas present. Gina got them all hung up on the wall there. So, um, wow. my God, you're seeing my inner sanctum. <laughs> here, here, I'll show you. We're gonna make some people. We're gonna we're gonna upset some people right now. Go ahead, go ahead. 
Oof. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Yeah, that's when we had dinner at the White House. Let's not show that to anybody else. Yeah. That's when yeah. that's when I was solo, brother. I went nice. to the presidential inauguration solo. No. They have anybody to go to. But oh, man. But God. Hallelujah. But God. <laughs> Anyhow, so do the devotionals, support your local church. <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of all my extra mugs in the house. Well, Mr. <laughs> Hernandez, if there's Starbucks mugs, send them my way. Glory. <laughs> so um, do a devotional. Yes. Tune in to your local pastor and then and then find um, find something that's fun for your young people yes. that you think, man, support the pastor, agree. Don't, it, it, yes. yes, don't criticize the pastor. No, these pastors didn't know they were going to have to become televangelistas. Wow. Like they weren't ready. Nobody was ready. So they, just support them. And, and it's about the word anyhow. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, thank God we have all this technology, but my, my, I, you know, the older I get, and I'm not super old, I'm 40, but the older I get, the more I'm impressed, I'm not impressed. When I was 20, 25, I was impressed by, you know, I'm like, how many people you got? Oh man, your church has a thousand people. Your church has 500 people. Wow. That's dope. Mm -hmm. um, the older I get, that's not what impresses me. What impresses me is faithfulness. Mm -hmm. What impresses me is a man of God that would labor in a city for 30 years. And maybe the church never grows bigger than 20 or 30 people, but they were faithful. Yes. They were faithful. That means so much to me because, brother, when you get to heaven, your heavenly father isn't going to say, hey, that's a big church you grew. That's He's right. not going to say, man, that was a killer. That's a killer bass line you played. <laughs> man, that was some, that was some powerful harmony. Yes. He says, well done, faithful servant. Amen. Amen. We're living to hear the father say that we were faithful. That's what this is all about about and i just i appreciate somebody's faithfulness and so love your pastor support send him a uh, uh, like a comment when he's doing his you know when he's preaching write a little comment in there amen pastor predica lo preach it brother amen and then text him or email him or call him and say pastor that really spoke to me because i'm telling you um and this is a little bit of a joke please no one take this the wrong way uh, my dad used to joke and say that preaching was like the dolphin show at the zoo. The more the more noise you make, the higher they jump. The more, the, you know, when you're you know when you're in church, you all know when you do the whole like I'm an hermano, yes. you know that like that stirs the preacher up, and then he's like I'm an aquí boy hermano, and you know, the air starts getting messed up. Well, when you're preaching to an empty room, you don't have that. That's right. You don't know if you, you just you're just preaching, but let him know. Call him later and be like, you know what, that really. Bless me. Thank you for praying and prophesying over my dad last week, Pastor Tony. Oh, Brother Alan Sainz, I love your family. I love your dad. I love you. And I'm so thankful that God has raised him up in a mighty, mighty way because God's not done with Pastor Phil Sainz. God gave me a right. prophetic word last night or last week. He told me to, call, to, to prophesy over him over social media. And to let him know the mission is not accomplished. Tell me about it. I used to work at SeaWorld. Brother Hector, I mean, you know the more noise that happened. Yes. That's the way us Pentecostals, apostolics, yes, right. charismatics, whatever you want to call yourself. <laughs> that's how we are. So support your pastor. And then find out who, you know, depending on the ages of your kid, who do they like to follow? My camera was upside down. Man, I got to criticize. Come on, Lord, speak. Pastor, God bless you, Pastor. I'm sorry that happened, but you know what? Sometimes we've got to turn this world upside down That's if we're right. going to reach for the right. glory of God. So you know what? The other day, I have a, a an English Facebook page. My main, you know, it's Pastor Tony Suarez is my main Facebook or Facebook page. I do communion every morning. Well, we had people asking me if I would do it in Spanish. So I started a Tony Suarez and Espanol page. Nice. Bro, day one of communion. I got the camera the wrong way. It's like, and I'm like, I don't think that Instagram does it, but the camera, and I'm like, oh, yeah. man, I don't live in Niga. This is, this is how communion started the first yeah. day. Yeah. What do you think I'm going to do? Get mad and say, no, you just go with it, guys. <laughs> Have fun. Nobody likes what we're going through right now with coronavirus. Right. Nobody right. wants That's right. to be locked up. So just love your pastor, support him, encourage him. Oh, I got an idea. Help him. Mm -hmm. well, it, be like, hey, pastor, let me help you. Let me thank you for prophesying over me in January. Well, God bless you, Brother Noah Carpenter. Hey, that's a great young man from Mississippi. I remember him. I wow. think he's going to be like a congressman or a senator. 
I know he's going to be a preacher, but he's going to do some other stuff too. That's a, that that guy right there. You need to remember that name, Noah Carpenter. No carpet. Ask him for yes, ask him ask him for autographs now and then sell them on eBay later when he's I'm famous. About to free shop this charity. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just support your pastor. Offer help. Hey, the uh, according to the law, you know, it's groups of ten or less. Maybe ask your pastor again. Practice social distancing. But if you're really talented with cameras and stuff, say, hey, pastor, can I come set the camera up for you, or can I can I help you? Um, do that. Be a help to people. Um, those the, those big time pastors that you see on social media, they're not doing that alone. They have a team that helps them. They have experts that teach them how to do this stuff. And so be a help in times like this. What is your message for everyone? Is there something that we should take? Thank you for coming to Move Church. What's my message? My uh, Oh, and then amen. Thank you, brother. You're speaking truth. Support your local church. Amen. Centro Vida OC de Anaheim. Manda bendiciones. Bendiciones de regreso. La paz de Cristo. Amen, hermanos. Amen. Um, my message right now is that we need a right now move of God. All right, let me share it. Oh, they, they, they're going to make me pull my Bible out. Where's my Bible? Oh, here's my Bible. All right, here's the message. Here's the message. Bro, this is your thing. Let me shut up and you talk. No, no, no. You are, like, your preachings are amazing. You're my favorite preacher person. So go ahead. I want to hear this. I want to hear this. That's one of the questions, actually. It's, it's where does this lead the church? Tell them how much I had to pay you to tell, for you to say that tonight. Zero dollars. Okay. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> okay. But that's actually one of my questions. It's where does he leave the church at now? Basically. Amen. Well, hey, brother, brother, CV pastor or co-pastor, let me, let me, um, let me give you your sermon for Sunday. This is what, this is what everybody, everybody needs to see this in the Bible. Um, I wish I had a different translation to read you, but I, I don't, I just have what I have here right now. Second Chronicles Chapter 7, Segunda de Crónicas, Capítulo 7. And I'm going, we all know verse 14. Everybody, my brother's told. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say that. Okay, Second Chronicles 7, 14. Everybody knows this verse, okay? You got you to gotta say it like a preacher. Everybody knows it. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and yes. pray and turn from their wicked ways. <laughs> then I'll heal from heaven and yes. I'll heal the land. Okay, we know that yes. verse. Yes. That's the antidote. Okay. But check something out I've never seen before. Verse 13. Never saw it before. Now, ladies and gentlemen, especially aspiring preachers, yes. don't steal stuff. Borrow stuff, don't steal it. If if you hear a good thought, give a person the credit, okay? You know, just give it credit because, look, everything's online now. You can't steal anything. Somebody will be like, man, that was a blessing. In fact, that was a blessing when T.D. Jakes preached it 10 years ago. You can't. <laughs> don't, don't be stealing stuff, all right? Um, my God. I, I've used a couple of your points, and I always say, Pastor, I heard this in Pastor Tony Suarez preaching. So well, he I'm not Hector, Hector. Ocho, o, 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 yeah. They just got the Holy Ghost here right now. <laughs> um, here's I heard this from Jensen Franklin. Yes, Pastor Jensen Franklin talked about hearing it from Johnny Moore. See the the chain of giving credit. Yes. I've never seen this before. I know Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Si mi pueblo que es invocado por mi nombre uh, se humillara y buscara de mi rostro y se arrepintiera, we know I, I'm paraphrasing in Spanish, yes. but I never saw verse thirteen till now. This is what verse 13 says. If I shut up the heaven and there be no rain, if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence or a plague amongst my people. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a second. Think about since November. Mm -hmm. If I shut up the heaven and there be no rain, there was a drought like any other drought we've seen in Australia in November, wow. in December. Mm -hmm. If I send locusts to eat the crops of the land that just happened in Africa, yes, or if right. I send pestilence or a plague that we're living through that right now, mm -hmm. that's right. then, my God, my God, I wish we were in church. Touch three people and say then. Well, you can't do then. that right now, but just, you know, uh, shake your head at three people and say right. then, then, then. <laughs> Hey, hey, well, put me in the <laughs> flat right now. <laughs> God help us. I love it, I love it, I love it. So if I shut up the heaven and there be no rain, if I send locusts to eat the crop, or if there is a plague that comes on the land, then if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and mm -hmm. seek my face, 
turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear them from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. Another translation says, I will restore the wealth to their land. Wow. We're living in the moment of the fulfillment of these Bible verses and we That's know right. what we're supposed to do. I don't want to get sued for saying we have the cure to coronavirus, but we have an antidote for the world right now. That's right. We need to humble ourselves and recognize we don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. Number two, we need to pray. Number two, we need to seek God's face and say, you know what? We're not going to put our trust, our hope in our own selves and our own ingenuity and our own wisdom. God, you're our only hope. And then we got to turn from our wicked ways. Church, we got to get clean. We got to get holy. We got to get sanctified. We got to get ready. That's right. And if we do those things, he said, I'll hear you. He said, I'll forgive you and I'll heal the land. That's where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Second Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. Wow. 13 and 14. God's in control of this thing. You're right, Deborah. God is in control. Mm -hmm. And good, you know what? Sometimes bad stuff happens to good people. Goodness mm -hmm. gracious, I've lived through hell on earth. I, I buried my first wife. I buried the mother of my three children. But I didn't give up on God. My Sorry. wife, Gina, buried her first husband 10 years ago from colon cancer. She didn't give up on God because though he slay me, yet will I praise him. My trust isn't, my, my faith and my praise and my confidence isn't built upon what I'm living through in the circumstance. My faith is built upon what I have during the circumstance. This is my warranty, ladies and gentlemen. This is my guarantee. If something breaks, you go get the warranty and you Google what the warranty says about the product you just bought. All of you gamers out there, I don't know anything about game, about Xbox and PlayStation other than I know I get a credit card bill for the stuff my kids buy. <laughs> but I do know that when that stuff breaks, they're running down here, Daddy, I got this warranty. Daddy, I got this guarantee, this, that, whatever. This is your guarantee right here, ladies and gentlemen. Right. When yeah. life happens, you go to the warranty. What does the warranty say? The warranty says, let, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. The weak, the, the warranty says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous will run into it and they shall be saved. The warranty says, he that hideth under the shadow of the, Almighty, of, of, of the wing of the Almighty shall abide there. You, this is, I, I, in times of trouble, you go to the word and you get a word and you hold on to the word and you don't let go of the word because the word shall come to pass, my brother. Amen. Amen. Mercy. Amen. That is right. This is your show. This is your show. Praise God. No, that's amazing. I, I needed that word. We all know we needed this word. And that's exactly why I brought you on here, amen. So, man. So I just want to thank you so much, Pastor. Um, that's basically all my questions. I um, mean, I know it's late for you. But you didn't ask wanted... me any questions. <laughs> you answered them. You're the prophet. <laughs> you knew what I was going to ask. <laughs> no, no. Well, I want you to know that I'm thankful for you. Yes. I'm thankful for every young person that is serving the Lord and, and, and every one of you, look, we're keeping the faith in a really difficult situation. That's right. But the Amen. world's wa the warranty, that, just, that needs to be a clip. Hey, <laughs> I may have preached about it one other time. Nice, okay. nice. Okay, I'm going to tell you my warranty story. Go ahead. And then, and then I'll go to bed because I got to wake up in six hours for communion. Yes, yes. Luke Aaron Reed is still listening. Mercy, my God. The man of God <laughs> is still here. I'll tell you my warranty story. Um, about 15 years ago, I moved to Virginia Beach. We buy a house. doesn't have a stove. doesn't have any appliances. So we go. I, I, you know what? I, I see. I don't know if you can see that back there. There's all my, there's all my office bobbleheads back there. <laughs> well, it's amazing. Huh? I, I just look back there. I've never, like, I never sit at this angle for the, I look at me. Oh, office bobbleheads. <laughs> Um, bobbleheads, yeah. Yeah, bobbleheads. Walk by faith, not by sight. So I moved to Virginia Beach. We buy a house. We don't have a stove. We don't have a fridge. We got to go buy everything new. We didn't have a lot of money. But the sales lady told me, she said, this stove here, this was a bougie stove. This was a fancy stove. This was like, this was like bow tie stove right here, okay? <laughs> this stove had stuff I'd never heard of. It had a chocolate melter. I've never wow. wanted to melt chocolate. Like, why melt chocolate? But I yeah. thought, you know what? I'm living on the east side. I mean, I'm fancy. I, I never want to melt chocolate, but at least I know I have the option. It had a butter melter. 
I, I'm the, why? I mean, this it was it was this beautiful, incredible stove. It looked like a spaceship. But she sold me on the warranty. She said, "Look, if anything happens, no questions asked. Thirty days. You don't like it? It breaks. Doesn't matter what happens. You talk. You call me in the next thirty days. We'll take it back. We'll give you a new one, or we'll give you your money back." I thought, "Well, my God, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and buy the thing." So yeah, I bought the yeah. warranty. Three weeks later, we got a kitchen fire. Got a kitchen fire. Wow. And I'm looking at my stove, and you know, I got the gift of eating. I like to eat. I mean, it's one of my spiritual giftings. And I'm like, oh my God, my stove, my stove. And I got to thinking, and stop judging me. I got to have that butter melter. That, I'm telling <laughs> you, I want to live like the bougie people. That's so, right. <laughs> it, and so that now forget the um, social. I forgot we're supposed to touch our face. Jesus help me. Um, <laughs> So we get this kitchen fire, the thing breaks down, it's melting. I'm thinking, oh my God, what are we going to do? And I remembered, I got a warranty. I got a warranty. And stop judging me because I know you're about to judge me. Some of y'all want to tell you the story. I called the company. Yes, I did. I called them and I said, you know, this isn't what I was expecting after three weeks. And they're like, well, for quality purposes, could you tell us what's wrong with the stove? I said, no, I cannot. And they said, well, just to help us, can't you tell us? And I said, no. Because my warranty says no questions asked. That's what the wow. warranty says. So three days later, come to the house, three tall guys, where's the stove? I'm like, it's over there. So they go to get, and the guy, look, he sees the stove. I mean, it's a, it's a pile of junk at this point. He's like, he looks at the stove. He's like, are you for real? Are you really trying to, re what, who do you think you are? And I think he said something about my mom. And then he's like, what gives you, what, what do you think gives you the right? And I trembling held up these papers and i'm like uh and he goes give me that and he looks at it i had the warranty in my hands wow and he looks at the warranty and he goes well i can't believe it he goes aren't you lucky that you read the warranty because now listen you might not think it's right you might not think it's fair you might think that i'm petty or whatever else you want to call me but according to my warranty, I had a right. And so, yes, I did return it. And, yes, the store did take it back. And, yes, I'm the reason the stores no longer have those warranties. And three days later, they had to bring me a new stove to my house because that was the warranty. Yes. Now, you could say, Suarez, that's not fair. I don't agree. And you know what? You're probably right. But I had a warranty. No and worries. I fulfilled what my warranty promised. Now, why would I tell that to you? Because there's a bunch of burnt out Christians out there <laughs> that are failing and they're hurting and, 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 the, and they're struggling. And you know what? They don't know what the warranty says. That's right. The warranty says a just man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. The warranty yeah. says he didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. The warranty says by his stripes we are healed. The warranty says that he will supply our needs according to his riches in glory. You got to yeah. know this word. This is your warranty. And you know what? When God does it for you, there's going to be somebody looking at you and say, mm -mm, they don't deserve that. They shouldn't be getting that blessing. They shouldn't be getting that money. They shouldn't have that job, have that wife, have that husband. They'll be, And you know what? They probably write about you. But the problem is you got a warranty that says God favors you. Ooh, I wish I was in church right now. I touched three right. people. God favors, God favors. God favors you. And nobody might think it's right. Nobody might think it's fair. But what people think doesn't matter. All that matters is what God thinks. And I declare there's a warranty over your life. There's a warranty over the people of God right now in Amen. the middle of coronavirus. And I'm not making light of the situation. I know many people have lost their jobs. I know a lot of people are hurting. I know a lot of people are struggling. I know a lot of people are confused, but I know the master of the wind. I know the man that walked on the water. I know the man that calms trouble. I know the man that when he walks on, when he walks into a storm, the wind stops blowing, the waves cease and the rain goes away. Just Amen. because he shows up. And that same God is the God of this season right now walking through coronavirus. And I'm asking this mighty God. I'm asking this wonderful, mighty God that in the same manner that he walked on the water towards the boat where the apostles were. I'm asking him, mighty God, walk into this storm and bring the waves under your feet. You know what? The, the apostles were fearful of what? the waves. Mm -hmm. They were fearful of the waves, but with every step that Jesus took, they didn't even realize what God was doing. Every time Jesus took a step, 
He was putting another wave under his foot. Another step, another wave. That means that the things that they were fearing, he was putting under his feet. And I'm declaring tonight in Jesus' name, God's putting coronavirus, COVID-19, and the spirit of fear under his feet feet and Amen. we're asking the lord to send the angels of heaven to come and purify the land and sweep this virus and sweep this pandemic and sweep this fear back into the sea and send it back to the pit from where it came from right. and we're declaring healing in the name of jesus somebody asked me earlier about healing this is a fine time for you to start operating in the gifts and speak the word of the lord and declare the word of the lord be like elijah and prophesy that it's not going to rain just prophesy mm -hmm. the word and then go and start praying and saying, God, I spoke this word. Now help me, help me so that it help me so that the word be true. So do that. Prophesy, speak to the storm, rebuke coronavirus, and then help me pray that an end comes to this soon and very soon in the name of you. Let, let that praise dance break out, Pastor. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, All right, I got dun, it. Dun, dun, dun. I'm done. Ooh, I almost fell out. No catchers for me right now. I just fell out right now. Hey, man, listen. Thank yeah. you for letting me be on here tonight. And this isn't going to be the last time. we got to do this thing again. Yes. Amen. That's we got to right. do this again. And uh, I thank you guys so much. Let me pray a prayer of blessing over everyone that's here tonight. Father, Amen. I thank you. I thank you for Brother Bowtie. And I thank you for everyone that's watching this tonight. I thank you for their faith. I thank you for their zeal. And I ask that you would bless them. Let them be like Isaac. Let them, let them sow in a season of lack and let them reap a hundredfold. Let this be a great season. I speak blessing over you tonight. I speak healing over you tonight. I speak peace and joy in the Holy Ghost over you tonight. And before this year is done, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we declare, we confess, we're decreeing that we're going to come out on the other side and we're still going to be praising God because we'll say God sustained us. And now we acknowledge no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you so much for having me on tonight. Man, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that he encouraged your faith. And let's remember that you have a warranty, but not only that, but you also have the antidote in this season of, of, of our lives. Let's continue to pray for Pastor Tony Suarez and his ministry. And if you guys want, you guys can check him out on YouTube. He has his own YouTube channel. Uh, Pastor Tony Suarez, um, he has his testimony, his preachings on there. And uh, let's continue to pray for his ministry and that God blesses him. And hopefully he'll return back and we can, and I can interview with further questions face to face, right? But I hope you guys enjoy this video and keep watching. God bless you guys.